Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. Don't worry, today's video isn't about the washing machine. It's actually about the laundry itself. I've recently discovered a problem that affects every single living human on Earth. Humans have a fundamental flaw in their system, a bug, some may say. And it's the fact that we can't actually tell when something is wet. We kind of estimate by the temperature and the feel of it, but we cannot precisely say whether something is wet or dry. So that's the problem I'm going to try to solve today, right after this message from my sponsor. This episode is brought to you by JLC PCB, your one-stop shop for your electrical and mechanical project needs. JLC PCB offers services such as 3D printing, CNC milling, and of course, PCB prototyping and component sourcing, so everything you need to get your project going is available on JLC PCB. And their website is super easy to use. Simply head over to JLC PCB, select which service you'd like to use, and drag and drop your design files and get an instant quote. And don't forget to use the code MELLOWLABS at checkout. You can get professional prototype PCB boards for as little as $2. And right now, JLC PCB is offering a $30 coupon on their six layer PCBs. So you can get a high quality multi-layer PCB starting from just $5. Thank you again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this episode. Check out the link in the description for more information. Now, finding out whether something is dry or wet is actually pretty easy because water is a conductor. A very bad one, but a conductor nonetheless, which means if you just grab a multimeter and put it into ohms mode, if we take our probes and stick them in the dry side, you'll see that nothing happens. But then when you stick them on the wet side, you'll see that we actually get a resistance value of about uh, two mega ohms, which varies depending on the amount of moisture in the fabric, which means if we consistently measure the, the resistance of the fabric over a period of time, we should be able to see that resistance dropping all the way to zero, which would mean it's dry. So let's figure out how to do that. This is actually much simpler than you expect. All you really need is a microcontroller with analog input pins and a 10K resistor. Uh, this specifically is an ESP32C3. It doesn't matter too much as long as it has analog input pins. And I'm going to put them together in this circuit. But instead of using the uh, photo resistor, I'm just going to have two bare wires that I can use to attach to things. And that right there should be everything we need to sense the uh, resistance between those two pins. Let's uh, hook it up to my computer, upload some Arduino code, and just uh, get it to print out the uh, resistance. Okay, so I've got a short script running that's just printing out the resistance value, and I have a resistor here that I don't know the value of, and if I put it across here, it should tell me that it's actually a 10K resistor. Fantastic, there's a little bit of... Um, up and down jibble wobble, but uh, that's mostly just because it's on the breadboard. There's a lot of interference and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna duplicate this because I want two probes that I can test with. I could theoretically have four with this ESP, but two will be enough for testing. And I'm gonna put the, the, the wires on little clothes pegs so that I can quickly put them on and off of clothing. And I'm also going to flash this with ESP Home just because reading the data inside of Home Assistant will be a little more intuitive for me and more visual. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a flash. All right, and we're done. So I've got ESP Home installed on here. I've got uh, longer wires and I've got the clamp set up. Uh, with the first clamp, I tried just winding the wire around the, uh, the clamp and that works, but it's a little fiddly. Uh, for the second one, I actually just got some of this... Uh, copper tape which i think you can pick up from like garden stores apparently slugs don't like them so uh, yeah i've put that around the the clamp and then i just soldered my wire to them so now we've got the uh, home assistant readout here if i close hold on if i close this clamp it should say wet fantastic and if i open it again it should update to dry eventually it's pretty slow to update there we go and then again, the same with this one. Eventually, it will update. Oh wait, did it already? Is this two? Wait, let's, let's, uh. Okay, I think, I think both of them work. Dry, okay, fantastic, they both work, awesome. So now, uh, we can actually put them on some clothes. Okay, so I've set up a time lapse with my iPad with the graphs on it and everything, and I've made this towel wet. So now 
I'm gonna put it on here like so and I'm gonna put the uh, the sensors on it and hopefully we should get a, uh, a resistance reading they're both registering as wet I think the one that's closest to the radiator should maybe be drier faster because the radiator is on but yeah we'll, we'll see the time lapse is going so um, let's come back tomorrow and see the results Okay, so I left this running overnight and that looks very promising. Just looking at the graph alone, that looks so good. Okay, um, all right, well, the battery on that died, so let's hope we got any footage out of that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, it, this graph alone, that, that looks so good. I am a little surprised. This side seems to have dried faster than this side, which is completely not what I expected considering it's next to the radiator and the radiator is on. So that's weird. But, but yeah, those graphs look really good, except the uh, the very beginning where I had a little bit of an issue of like actually getting it to uh, uh, have a good connection. Uh, I don't think these clamps are putting enough pressure on the uh, actual fabric to like make good contact. But after I like pressed it down, it seems to have worked completely fine. So that's awesome. So now I wanna make this just like a more usable system, right? So I'm thinking like a, maybe like a little display that will, maybe not even the display, maybe like an LED or two that will just show me the status. I like Home Assistant on the back end, but just having a quick glimpse at the washing and being like, oh, it's not dry yet. I think that will be the, uh, the way to go with this. And uh, yeah, maybe like a couple more clamps. I don't know, I have a couple of ideas. I've, I've left this overnight, so I had time to ponder. Um, but yeah, I have some ideas. Let's, uh, let's go to the drawing board. Yeah, I still don't have a whiteboard, so I'm using the fridge. Uh, so my idea is I, I want to 3D print some clamps and uh, I want to uh, 3D print a couple of different variants because I really want to know what the uh, clamping pressure of a 3D printed clamp can be. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, I want quite a bit of pressure on the actual material so that it has a good connection. And then I'll have a separate board with just an ESP that will like take all the connections from multiple different points uh so i'll probably have a couple of clamps i want to say maybe three and then i also want to have like a weird little pack with uh, either side having a uh, like a copper connection so that when you're in some areas you don't want to use a clamp it, like for example if you're drying a hoodie the inside pocket of a hoodie gets you know it takes a longer time to dry so having like a like a like a puck kind of thing that i can just put in the pocket instead of having to put a clamp on it i think that would be better um it's it's an experiment so we'll see but yeah so uh, yeah a couple of those esp i would like to have an led per each uh, connector probe thing but that's going to be a lot of GPI opens. If I was to make the, you know, RGB LEDs, that's three LEDs per thing. At that point, I would have to deal with a multiplexer and I don't really want to have to deal with a multiplexer. So I think we're just going to go with like one LED, which is just going to like tell me the average of the, uh, of the dryness of stuff. Maybe even a couple RGB LEDs, but just connect it all together so that this whole like case kind of glows and gives you the vibe of the the wetness of your laundry so that's kind of my idea i'm gonna go and revise this a little more i'm gonna look into some clamps and uh, we'll take it from there
welcome back to a brand new part of the show that I'd like to call Clip Review. And yes, I have been paid by each of the creators to feature their clips. Starting off with clip number one, this clip does the, the, the usual clippy things that a clip should do. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel like it's putting a lot of pressure on my finger, so uh, I'm not gonna go with this one. Number two is a little guy. He's, uh, he's pretty good at clipping. He's got quite a bite on him. Unfortunately, he's a little too small for what I need it to do, so uh, not this time. Number three is this guy with his long little crocodile teeth and little eye. He's pretty good. Unfortunately, he only opens about that far and that's not very far, but he does have a very good grip on him. Moving on. Clip number four is this little guy who looks a little bit like a pair of pliers and does have a pretty good grip. Uh, unfortunately, I think I need a little more space around here so that it can grip around stuff. Uh, so yeah, but apart from that, it's actually pretty good. Very grippy. I like it. Number five is this guy, which I made for a bag of chips. Unfortunately, in the time it took to print, I ran out of chips. So, uh, four out of ten. And our second to last contender is this little guy, who uh, is actually pretty cute. A little small for my liking, but does have quite a bite. Unfortunately, he broke and is squeaky. Squeaky is never a win. Uh, yeah, he broke the first time I tried to open him. So, uh, big owl. Which leaves us with contender number seven. Is it an A? Is it a fish? No, it's a clamp with very good clipping strength and uh, it's actually, you know, actually a good size. So uh, that's the one I'm gonna go with. Uh, thank you for all the other uh, contenders. Unfortunately, you will lose. I've got all of the individual components done. I've got the uh, four individual clamps, basically the same as the, uh, the prototype model, apart from I'm actually using the 3D printed ones. They look pretty good, whether they work, I don't know yet. Uh, I've got a nice 3D printed case to put the uh, PCB board that I made in it. Uh, yes, I know, PCB board, ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> I did also design this in uh, Easy EDA, so if you wanna make one, but you don't actually want to do all the soldering yourself, I mean, you still have to do the soldering, but you don't have to do all the individual wires, uh, you can just get it manufactured by um, JLC PCB. I'll leave the links to that down below. So this now fits into this uh, little 3D printed case, like so. We've got a nice little lid that just snaps on here. And now we can plug the uh, individual clamps in. Uh, orientation doesn't matter because uh, it just doesn't. That's it. Um, <laughs> uh, I do wish I had better wires than these ones. I, these, these are gonna get tangled up very easily. If I can swap them out in the future, I might. Maybe I'll even make a version two of the whole thing if you're interested. But um, for now, they will do the job. So I can plug everything in. One moment. I've already got ESP Home installed on here. So theoretically, all I should have to do is just plug this in and see if the individual clamps are showing up. That's a lightning cable. God damn it. I should be able to just have a go up in Home Assistant and work perfectly. I do quite like the lights through the uh, infill in the 3D print. It looks kind of like little diamonds. It's kind of cute. Okay, each individual pump is going. Why is number four reading as wet? Which one's number four? Okay, hold on. Okay, this one's probe number one. Let's label that before I forget. Wait, no, that I should label the actual port. No, this is clamp number four. And the reason it's actually showing up as wet is because that's the only one that seems to actually have the two... Um... Did I screw that up already? Hold on. That was number four. There is no such thing as a permanent marker with isopropyl. And then you are number three. Okay, cool. So all of these work as they should. They don't have great contact on the nibs, but if I hold them down, they do connect. So as you can see, the lights also went green. So hopefully the uh, the drier it gets, the, uh, the greener the light is. So it starts red and then gets greener, uh, except, uh, that is actually the wrong way around because technically the, the lower the resistance, the higher the moisture level. So I actually need to invert that in the code, but it's okay because it's ESP home. I can just upload that over, over the air, but I should be able to do some laundry, hook this up and uh, see it dry. So um, let's do that. Okay, so now we can attach this messy looking thing. So I 3D printed a little clamp that goes at the back and that just kind of uh, clicks on there. We can uh, plug it in. 
it, it's just about out of range. Damn it. Okay, and now we can hook things up. Uh, I didn't make the little pebble thing that I was going to uh, put inside of the hoodie pocket. Um, I, I, I couldn't figure out an interesting enough way to actually make it easy to make. So instead, we've just got clamps, which are already tangling up. Oh, how did you end up going through there? <clears throat> Yes, uh, don't use individual wires for the clamps. It's uh, it's quite painful. Right, that can be plugged onto there. Let's make sure we have a nice good connection. Okay, so with everything connected, uh, I was gonna do a time lapse of it again, but that seems like a lot of wasted footage. Uh, so instead, I'm just gonna come back tomorrow morning and review the evidence. Uh, see you then. The results are in and they are messy, but conclusive. Um, so I realized when I did my wet towel test, I soaked the towel beforehand, which means it was basically at like 100% water saturation. Not really, but we'll go with that. Which means there was a good connection between one side of the probe and the other. So you could very clearly see the decrease in moisture level. Unfortunately, laundry after it's went through the, after it goes through the washing machine does not come out 100% wet because of the spinning cycles and everything. Maybe it's at like 20 to like 40%, which is good because it means your laundry dries a lot faster, but it does mean we don't get as good of a connection over the probes, which just means the data is a lot messier, but there is still a very noticeable drop in moisture, which means this concept works. Now, obviously, this is still a prototype. There's a lot of improvements that can be made. Number one, the cable. Number two, the clamp. The fact that you have to press it down, very annoying. And the fact that this has to be plugged into the wall, that can also be changed. Maybe if it was like a like a clamp that has all of the stuff already on it and it talks to like Home Assistant over Bluetooth or something. But, you know, those are just ideas I have for a possible version two. If you'd like to see that, do let me know down below. And um, yeah. That's kind of it. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you can. You get ad-free videos, early access, and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you on next week's live stream. Toodaloo. Get it? Because that's where my bathroom is. And I said toodaloo. Like, like to the loo. Loo is a British thing for bathroom. <sighs> toodaloo.